Hi everyone, this is video number three in a series helping you do your bomb calorimetry analysis. And in this video, I'm not going to use naphthalene, which was probably the sample compound you used. I'm going to consider my sample compound to be a slightly different molecule, biphenyl, which has the molecular formula C12H10. So fairly similar to naphthalene, but slightly different because I want you to repeat this analysis using whichever molecule it was that you combusted in the bomb calorimeter. Um, so uh, make sure that you adapt your numbers to this particular analysis and don't just blindly copy mine over because the exact procedure won't work. Um, so you'll definitely need to pay attention and make sure that you understand each step of the way so that you can apply it to your slightly different system. So let's consider the reaction of combustion between biphenyl and oxygen. We get 12 CO2 plus 5 H2O. And then there's going to be 29 halves moles of O2 reacting with every mole of biphenyl. And the molar mass of biphenyl is 154.21 grams per mole. All right, so if I want to find the number of moles of my sample, that is the number of moles of my biphenyl, that's going to have to be equal to the mass of my sample divided by the molar mass of my sample. Now imagine that I measured my pellet of biphenyl to equal 0 0.9310 grams. Then I'm going to divide that by 154.21 grams per mole. Maybe it would be helpful to have the mass of my sample pellet written up here. 0 0.9310. So I calculate number of moles of biphenyl to be 6.0372 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. All right. Now I can use this number to calculate how many moles of the other substances were either reacted or produced by this combustion. So I can get number of moles of O2 which are 29 halves multiplied times the number of moles of the sample. And if I run that calculation, I get 0 0.087539 moles. Similarly, I can also do NCO2 and NH2O. For NCO2, it's two times N sample. For H2O, it's five times N sample. These are the numbers I get, 0 0.072446, 0 0.030186 moles. So we're going to come back and use these numbers as we go on. Okay, next step. Let's say that I found delta T for my biphenyl compound using the techniques that I taught you in video number one of this series. Let's say that I measured a delta T of 1.47 Kelvin. I can use this to find the total heat released by the reaction. It's going to be C times delta T. And I'm going to use the same C that I used for my benzoic acid video, which was 10,230 joules per Kelvin. And then I'm going to multiply this times 1.47 Kelvin, which equals 15,038 joules. Okay, now I need to find the amount of heat released by the sample, and that's going to be the amount of heat absorbed by the calorimeter minus the amount of heat generated by the wire. 
and I'm going to do the same calculation that I did in the benzoic acid video where I do 9.6 joules per centimeter. And if I find that my delta L equals 8.6 centimeters of wire combusted this time, then I can just plug right in here 8.6 centimeters for my delta L. And I should calculate 82.6 joules, and there's my sig fig. That's how much heat was released by the combusting wire in the reaction. And so when I plug in those values into Q sample, 15,038 joules minus 82.6 joules. 14,955 joules. All right, that's how much heat was absorbed by the calorimeter that came out of the reaction. And now we are going to do a shift in perspective. Our perspective now, before at least, was the calorimeter. So that was the water, the bomb, the pail, the jacket, everything like that. But now we're going to shift the perspective to the reaction itself. So that was the pellet, the oxygen gas, and then the resulting CO2 and H2O. And um, in this particular reaction, there was no work. So therefore, whatever heat was released by the reaction was just directly equal to the delta U of the reaction. And this delta U of the reaction is going to be equal to the negative heat from the sample that was absorbed by the calorimeter. So that means my delta U is negative 14,955 joules. Right? So, again, this number up here represented how much heat went into the calorimeter, but this number here represents how much heat was lost by the reaction itself. So that's why it's a negative change in energy. We can't stop there. We are more interested in the delta H because delta H is more useful to us in a chemistry context. And delta H equals delta U plus delta PV. All right, now I'm going to do an approximation that delta PV is mainly just caused by the change in the P's and V's of the gases. And I'm going to use the ideal gas approximation because it's going to work well enough for our purposes. So this is going to equal delta NRT. And in fact, we're going to make one more approximation that this is just the, a change in the number of moles of the gas times RT. Because compared to the change in the number of moles of gas, the change in temperature is relatively small. So we're going to be able to approximate this delta PV by just looking at how many moles of gas there were that changed. So how many moles of gas were there that changed? The gas that, the only gas that existed after the reaction was CO2, and the only gas that existed before the reaction was O2, at least that reacted. So this is gonna equal I'm going to go back up higher in my notes and look up what my number of moles of CO2 were and my number of moles of O2. And I get 0 0.072446 moles minus 0 0.087539 moles. All right. And that gives me negative 0 0.01509 three moles for my delta N gas. Okay, so that means my delta PV is equal to delta N gas times R times T. So that's negative 0 0.001509 three moles times R 
and we have to use the correct R. We have to use the R that is in units of joules, mole, Kelvin. And then my temperature. And for the temperature, we're just going to use TB. And my TB was 297.58 Kelvin. That was my TB. Obviously, you're going to have a different TB. You're going to have a different N of CO2, a different delta N gas, a different NO2. So you'll need to plug in all of your numbers and do the analysis for your system. And what I get from all this is 37.341 joules. So my delta H is equal to negative 14,955 joules plus 37,000, uh, sorry, 37.341 three four one joules and that just gives me negative fourteen thousand nine hundred and eighteen joules and that's my delta H now in the next video I'm gonna show you how to make a couple of the corrections to this quantity and then obtain the final result